these days, sampling has been getting a lot of flack, a lot of hate, but I'm gonna tell you guys why I enjoy sampling and why you should continue to sample if that's your thing. There's been a lot of conversation going on about sampling being less creative, lazy, all type of stuff like that. In recent years, sampling has changed so much with the release of things such as Serato released Serato Sample 2.0 with the stems feature where you can go in and take the stems of a track and mute different parts of it. So for example, if I have a song that I want to sample and there's a vocal, bass, keys, and let's just say I want to take, and I'm going to add drums to that. Let's say I want to take the drums out and the vocals out. I could do that. Or I could take everything out and leave the vocals. I could take everything out and leave the drums. It's not perfect, but it's good enough for now. And I can only imagine what it's going to be like in the future. And also I know FL Studio has a new feature with their latest version where you can go in and get the stems from any song you want to sample as well. I don't use FL Studio personally, but I've seen people talk about it online. So it seems like the way it's going for sampling and some people don't like it. I like it for creative purposes for my own thing. There are for me personally, three main ways that I sample, that is by using music that I have physical copies of, which would be vinyls. If I go to a record store, I go in and I pick up records and I go through and, you know, figure out what random things, you know, based off of the cover. I don't have any set genre per se. I do like to go for jazz, soul, R&B, but if I see something that catches my eye, like in the soundtrack section or anything like that, maybe uh, world music, I will pick it up, look at it and make my decision based off the cover art for the most part. The other way is what you're watching me on right now, YouTube. I used to sample on YouTube a lot, like find songs on YouTube, get them off YouTube. You know, you do that however you do it. And then you go ahead and drop it in your DAW and you sample that. That's a good way to find some samples. The third way for me is Tracklib. I use Tracklib because it's simple and easy to clear your tracks. That's the one thing about sampling that I'll make a lot of sample beats of popular songs, but I'll never put them out, never send them to anybody. Well, I may send them to somebody if they want to use them or have an idea or if I see it fits them. That's just because the process of getting it, getting it cleared could be so expensive, especially if it's something well, well, well known. And for me personally, I've been on both sides of this. I've had one of the songs I've worked on get sampled and I went through the process of having to approve the sample. The track has been released, it's getting nice numbers and I get paid from that because I am credited as a writer on that track because I produced a song that was then sampled. So that's how it works. So again, I've been on both sides of it. I like being on both sides of it. So when it comes down to getting clearances and stuff like that, I'm all for it because I've experienced it. If you guys want to hear more about that, I could tell you that later on. Again, when it comes to track lib, it's what I like to do is look for, I believe, the class C licenses, which are like $50 to clear. You go in. So if you have that set in mind, you can filter it to where you will get class C. And then from there, you go through and you will see the whole list. You can browse it however you want to. You can browse it by the key of the song. You can download the stems. You can go through by the different genres, the popularity. I like to find the stuff that's not really popular because I don't want to go through and download something to sample that maybe 10,000 other people just did this week to try and sample the same thing but you go through and figure out how you want to do it. They have a feature where you can go through, loop a specific part of the song, add drums to it, change the pitch, change the tempo right there on the site. So you kind of are auditioning the sample on the website before you even download it. And once you download it, they take a credit, then you go and do that. It's a whole credit system, but I like it. It's pretty cool. If you guys want to check that out, click the link in the description. Looking for samples on YouTube is the old way of looking for samples for me. I used to find different pages that would put up playlists of old music. I still am subscribed to some channels that will upload records <laughs> regularly, stuff I haven't heard of, some stuff I have heard of. And you can go on there, download it or get it however you get it, as I said. And then you go ahead and you can sample those. And sometimes there's some rare finds on there. It might be a version of a popular song that you never heard. Could be a song by a popular artist you never heard. And that's one of the things that I like about vinyls. When it comes to vinyls, sometimes there are different versions on these vinyls. I like to go to the record store to find different things as I did today. Went to a local record store and picked these up. 
And the whole process was pretty cool. The other cool thing about going to a record store is you never know what you're going to find. Different record stores have different records. When I was over in Germany with Native Instruments for Creator Base, they took us to a local record shop and I picked up, I think, five or six records at that point in time. And it's stuff that I may not have been able to find over here. That's the thing about it. You never know what you're going to get. I think around me, there's probably about six or seven local record shops. So I may pick up this from the one I went to today, and then there'll be something completely different at the next one, because you never know. Now, you do not have to go to record shops. Me personally, I've had the experience of going through at my grandparents' house in their basement, they had records from way back in the day, all type of stuff, Stevie Wonder. There's a whole lot of different things you could probably find inside of your family's basement, storage, wherever, if somebody was a music lover, because I'm learning that a lot of people didn't get rid of this stuff. Me personally, when I was coming up, I had a lot of CDs, but once the uh, digital stuff came in, I kind of got rid of all my CDs because everything is already there. But this stuff, some of this stuff isn't even available on a digital platform yet. So that's always good because you are ahead. And then the other thing about it is if you sample, all the information is on here. So you could probably try and figure out where to go if you want to clear it or if you're just doing it for your own creativity and not, you know, monetizing anything. So I don't, personally understand the hate that sampling gets. I get it because some people feel like it's taken away from the creativity of it. But for me, that sounds like the old man back in the day when, let's say, Bad Boy was on top or, you know, going up through the 2000s and stuff like that, where they said, all that music came from stuff we used to listen to back in the day. All y'all doing is stealing it. And it's just... That's just what it is. The majority of the music I like personally comes from sampling. I think I'm going to keep on sampling and keep on sampling and keep on sampling. I haven't had a song that popped that was a sample like that I did have one actually, but I had to go through a process with that of the clearances and stuff not going that way. So we had to rework the sample story for a whole nother day, like not even rework the sample, take the sample out and do something completely different. And the song did well. But um, outside of that, even as I shared with my own experience, I've had the letter sent to me that somebody wanted to sample, had to go ahead and figure it out with my lawyer, what we were going to do with it. Cause I wanted to definitely wanted to get it done, but always have somebody on your team that knows the terms and stuff. So that way you can, make things go as smooth as possible. And I know I mentioned that YouTube is a great place to find samples because there are some gems on there, but ain't nothing like <laughs> getting something, I don't even know what this is, and I'm gonna play it, and, and I'm gonna go ahead and see what's on here. And it's probably gonna be something good. And the way that I sample when it comes to vinyls, I've done a video on this before, but just right here. The way I do this is I have a record player that my wife got me for my birthday probably about three years ago. I have it plugged into my audio interface. And once I have it on there, I just power it up. I open up Logic and I record the audio inside of Logic. I look at the tracks on here, like the first track on here is, is called Smoke Gets In Your Eye. So if I'm going through and I'm listening to it, I'm going to record it if I like it. And then I know that this smoke gets in your eye. I record the whole entire track. I don't just do one part. I let it play out completely. Then I'll stop the record. And then from there, export it. And I'll have a little folder called the DDS Sample Collection. You know, if you want access to that. And no, I'm just playing. That's just for me. But um, I have that. And then from there, I drop it in Serato Sample. I'll listen to the sample. If there's things I want to take out, especially now with the stems, I do that. And I know that there's a whole debate about the laziness of it because people are just looping certain parts of songs. But I'm not going to lie. I've done that, too. They say it's lazy because all you're doing is taking this and adding drums on top of it. And some people don't even add anything to it at all. They just let it play. Serato Sample is my favorite tool when it comes to sampling, even before the release of the 2.0 version where they gave us stems. They had the time stretching they had where you could change the pitch it automatically sat with your tempo so if i moved it up it changed with it if i left it where it was it stayed where it was when it comes to chopping because i know there's different styles of chopping some people like to go through and do it manually some people like to do it automatically where you just set the slicer to eight bars and it'll just chop every eight bars 
all of that is there. It's easy. The interface is easy. You could add filters or whatever you want, little effects and stuff. I shouldn't say whatever you want to specific chops, reverse it, all of that done in Serato Sample. I know I have machine. A lot of people asked me at that point in time when I was making heavy Serato Sample videos, why are you using Serato Sample when you have machine? And it was simply because the simplicity of using Serato Sample. When I was using machine, before Serato Sample, I could sample. It was cool, but I'm all about making my workflow better, faster, and what works best for me. And that was what was work, what worked best for me was Serato Sample. So it's still my go-to to this day. Even if I'm using machine, I have machine opened up. I'll chop my sample up, and then I'll go through there, and I'll just be hitting them pads, you know, making the beat that way. If I'm using Logic, I'll load it up, and I'll use my keyboard like I'm playing the keys type thing, go through there and just find the samples, play it that way. So it all works out in the end. It's all about what works best for you. And if you're a sampler out there, I just want to tell you, keep on sampling. Don't let this whole debate get to you. It's all about creating. And again, some of the top songs, or at least I'll say my favorite songs were samples, but there's some top songs out there that are samples right now. And it's been that way for as long as I've been paying attention. So yeah, you guys, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you are a sampler, are you gonna keep on sampling? What's your favorite tool to sample? And uh, yeah, where's some, where do you get some of your gems from? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you all for watching. If you need help using machine, I have my video course up on teachable.com and it's entitled How I Use Machine. I cover everything from how I start a beat to finishing the beat. The link is in the description below. So if you need help with machine, go check that out. Hopefully you enjoyed the video.